Hey everyone, my name is Malone. I'm a third year medical student currently studying in London. I am also the co-author of Mind the Gap, which is a clinical handbook of signs and symptoms in black and brown skin. The handbook itself features pictures and descriptors about how certain conditions present on darker skin. It is important that we as a community start to appreciate that not all conditions will present the same. Growing up, a common theme was seeing members of the black British community have many issues with the healthcare system, which led to problems such as misdiagnoses. I did not entirely understand why this was the case as I was quite young. However, on arrival at medical school, I had the urge to look into this issue further. I was shocked to find out about some of the problems that exist within medical education to this day. A recent study in the USA found that medical students believe that black patients are less likely to feel pain. This is due to false beliefs about biological differences between black and white people. With these ideologies stemming from the times of slavery where scientists would often use these beliefs to justify slavery and the inhumane treatment of black men and women in medical research. Dr. Samuel Cartwright believed that blacks bore diseases making them insensible to pain when subjected to punishment. These beliefs have been carried and passed from generation to generation as scientists continue to experiment on black people with the assumption that the black body is more resistant to pain. I also found some striking statistics such as black women being five times more likely to die during childbirth in the UK and the recent COVID-19 pandemic illustrated how people of colour were disproportionately affected globally. The research suggested that there are a lot of reasons for this but one thing I noticed here was that there was a lack of training on detecting signs and symptoms on black and brown skin and I felt like this was something that I could do to help address that. At medical school, it didn't take me long to notice a lack of diversity in the medical imagery. For example, if we search for examples of Lyme's disease, which is often referred to as the bullseye rash, we commonly struggle to find examples that exist on darker skin. There is a white skin bias that exists when looking at medical textbooks that we use and the reference images that we use in the lecture theatres. There are many implications for having a lack of diversity in medical textbooks, which future healthcare professionals will take into practice. I decided to sit down with two of my tutors from university and discuss how we could tackle this problem. It quickly became pretty clear that there was currently a gap across the healthcare setting about how conditions presented in black and brown skin. We decided on addressing the issue by creating a resource in which people could find images of how signs and symptoms are presented on darker skin. This is how Mind the Gap was born. So as an example, let's take one of the conditions from the book. Echimosis is also known as bruising. This forms when blood vessels near the surface of the skin are damaged. This results in a purple or dark brown discoloration. In darker skin, the initial bruising will be harder to notice due to the increased melanin pigment. Also, the yellow discoloration of older bruises, which may be seen in white skin, can present more subtly in darker skin types. If we take another example and look at erythema, which is the reddening of the skin associated with inflammation and infection. Detection of erythema can be aided by swelling, which pulls the skin tight and gives it a smooth, shiny appearance. In lighter skin tones, this will be fairly visible with the naked eye. However, in darker skin tones, it's important to look for the burgundy undertones of the skin, which help to detect erythema. It is important that we are aware of these differences as the colour of your skin should not impact the quality of your care that you receive. A patient's care should not be compromised before they walk into the clinic as a result of a lack of training on our behalf as healthcare professionals. It took us 10 months to create Mind the Gap and since posting the work on social media, it has been viewed over 100 million times. I hope to see Mind the Gap change the way medical education is taught globally. The phrase Mind the Gap is commonly seen in the UK transport system. It almost acts as a warning sign to make you aware of the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the Gap, the handbook, acts as an educational tool to ensure that both current and future clinicians are adequately prepared for practice. If we continue to ignore this gap, patients will experience poorer health outcomes and potentially lose their lives as a result. It is especially important that we as doctors of tomorrow are adequately prepared to treat all of our patients. We need to stop building the foundations that will aid in narrowing and one day eradicate global healthcare inequalities.